Today, we're going to be learning this particular animation. I saw something very similar and used it as inspiration to create this particular piece. It's really quick and it's really easy. So let's dive right into it. Start off with our default scene. We're going to get rid of the default cube. We're going to take our camera. We're going to hit Alt G, Alt R to clear the location and rotation. Then we're going to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. And we're going to just grab it on the Z axis by a few units. Now we're going to shift A, add in a circle. Now this circle, we're going to reduce the number of vertices by going to that lower panel and reduce it to maybe 10 vertices. Then we're simply going to scale it up by quite a bit. And we're going to grab it on the Z axis and move it up by quite a bit. Now we're going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And we're going, since everything is selected, we're going to go to select and we're going to say checker deselect. So that selects every alternate piece. Then we're just going to grab it on the Z axis and move it down just like that. So now that we have this particular thing, I think we can tab out into object mode again and then continue to move it up on the Z axis so that everything lies on this plane. We'll also do Shift A to add in a ground plane and we'll just scale that up by quite a bit. Let's go into our camera view and look at what we have. So right now, our camera can't quite see anything. Let's change the camera from 1920 to, into 180 to 1080 and 1920 so that it becomes vertical aspect ratio. Let's select the camera, go to the camera properties, and change the focal length to something really small, maybe 8, maybe a little bit more as well so like let's go with four okay so we have our camera and let's take the camera and slightly move it up on the z-axis just a bit okay let's take this let's actually scale this down without scaling it on the z so just go out of camera view, scale it, not on the Z, down just a bit. And there you go. Now let's go ahead and with our camera selected, let's go to viewport display and remove passport out so that we see only what's in the camera, what's going to be rendered. Now this particular thing, we have to use geometry nodes to get it to look like what we want. So let's go ahead and open a new panel, change this to the geometry node editor, tap N to remove that and click new to get a new geometry node tree. Now this particular input, we're gonna change this to a curve and then back to a mesh. So we're gonna search for the curve to mesh and we're also gonna search for the mesh to curve. So let's place the mesh to curve here and then the curve to mesh right there. And for the profile curve, we're going to put in some sort of a circle so let's search for a curved circle so that's what's going to give it the thickness now 32 resolution is way too much because we're going to be using a subdivision surface anyway so let's reduce the resolution down to maybe something like five and let's place that into the profile curve right there we'll also have to change the radius down to maybe 0 0.002 that's too thin so maybe 0, 0 0.02 and that looks good but maybe a little bit larger will work. So yeah, this is what we currently have. Now look that this has really sharp edges and we don't want that. We want it to be a nice wave. So for that, we're gonna add in a new modifier to this stack, which is going to be a subdivision surface. So now that we have subdivision surface, if we increase the levels, you see it becomes more and more curvy. So we're going to have it maybe at six and we're going to have the render also at six for the levels in the viewport. We can maybe have it at four. That'll also work. So now you see, because it is a subdivision surface, it also becomes like very, very narrow. So you can either go into edit mode and just scale it on the Z axis like that. Select eight, tap to select everything and then scale it on the Z axis. You could do this. What this does 
is it actually keeps this circle relatively round, the profile curve. Otherwise, it gets flattened. So now that we have that, we need this particular camera to rotate. So what we want is we want it to do 360 degrees in 10 seconds. So we're going to start at frame one. We're going to end at frame 300. We're going to render this at 30 frames per second. So let's go here and change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. And now at frame one, with the camera selected, we're going to hit I, location, rotation scale, or just rotation works as well. And then at frame 301, we're going to say R, Z, 360, which is one full rotation. And then we're going to hit I, rotation. So now when we actually look at it, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, I think that's looking fine, just the way I want it. We also don't need this light, so we're going to remove the light. Also, Shift S, cursor to world origin, and there we go. Now you see it's slowing down and speeding up in the middle. We don't want that, so let's select the camera. Let's hit T over here with our, with our cursor in the timeline. Hit T and change this to linear. So now it's going to be smooth, and it's going to be a perfect loop when we reach the end. Now that we have this particular animation, we need to add in a few more things. First thing, just having this one single line isn't going to look good. And the plane, we can clearly see the edge. So I'm just going to scale the plane up even more. I'm going to go out of the camera view and I'm going to scale the plane up even more. And there we go. Now we wouldn't be able to tell the edge of the plane at all. And secondly, we need some more things happening around. So let's take this thing, hit Shift D to duplicate it, and then just grab it on the Z axis and just move it up a bit. So that gives us one extra layer of complexity. Then we can also grab it again, Shift D, and just scale it. So let's go out of the camera view and just scale it, scale it, scale it, scale it, and let's see how it looks over there. Okay, just scale it down a bit maybe. And let's look at it, and there we go. Finally, we can take this particular thing and grab it on the z-axis, straight up, and continue to grab it, move it up, GZ, and just Grab it, move it higher, probably move it even higher. So GZ, a little bit higher as well, GZ. And yeah, I think that works out fine. All right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the focal length from four to maybe eight. And no, I'll keep it at four millimeters itself. This I will grab it on the Z and just move it down so that it's much closer. And there we go. So now we have our animation. Now we have to actually texture all of this. So first thing, let's go into our render view. Let's go to the world and change this all the way down. For this geo node, first we're going to have to, since we're using geometry nodes, we're going to have to actually set the color or the material from within the geometry node tree. So we have to select the geometry node again, go to the geometry node editor, and then right here, just set material before the group output. Set material and just place it here. So here, we already have one material. Let's just have that for now. And now let's go to the material. Let's select material. And let's go ahead and edit it. So let's go to the shader editor and see this is the material that we have. Now we want this entire circle. So this object, we want the circle 
to go through the colors of the rainbow and end with the same color. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a gradient texture and we are going to view it. So control shift click to view what the gradient texture is like. And right now, I don't know how the gradient texture is going, but it is not exactly the way I want it. So I want it to be a radial gradient around the object. So I need to control T with the node wrangler switched on to add in a coordinate, texture coordinate and a mapping and change this from generated to object. So once we add the object into the vector, you see it's going to start off and it's going to go all the way around to the brightest value. So it's starting dark and it's ending the brightest over here. So that's exactly what we want. So now we have to go ahead and add in a color ramp. So let's add in a color ramp. Let's place that right here. And we need seven markers or at least way more than what they currently have. So let's see the colors as and when we go. Maybe we'll start off with this many markers. If we require any more colors in between, then we'll go ahead with it. So the first and the last are going to be the same. So I'm going to give that a purplish color. So it's going to be right here. It's going to also end with this purplish color. So right after that, the next color is going to be this sort of a blue. All right, so now that we have all the colors, I don't think the green is prominent enough. So let's actually switch it to a solid green. Okay, maybe this blue also could be a bit more to the blue because the transitions anyway is going to happen. So it's all right. Okay, the transition from red to this is very harsh. So I'm gonna do that and that'll hopefully be a smoother transition. Okay, maybe from linear, we can change this to ease so that a little bit of the transition's a little bit smoother. And yeah, I guess that works. But now we need this to be emissive. So we're gonna put the color into the emission. We're gonna change the emission strength to maybe something like 40 and we're going to control shift click this. So when we control shift click this, that's what's coming out. So the first thing that we have to do is switch on blue. And we have to clamp the bloom at four. Now, the colors seem like they're still a bit too washed out. So we're going to reduce the emission strength to maybe 20. And then take a look at it. And that looks better. That definitely looks better. However, the world is still not black. So I'm going to change the world to completely black. And then take a look at it once again. And I think this works. Now that we have this particular animation sorted out and the colors as well taken care of, let's just do that. We now have to figure out how to make a floor. So really quickly, we already have the plane. Let's switch on something called screen space reflection. So let's come here. Screen space reflections, just check this. And now you can immediately see these nice reflections happening on the floor, and that's great. But we need some more character to be added to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this plane a material. So let's create a new material. Let's call the material floor. And now let's deal with it. So we're gonna basically be playing with the roughness value of the floor. So we're gonna be putting something into this roughness value. So let's add in a noise texture. And we'll feed the noise texture as coordinates to a Voronoi texture. So now this goes in as the vector and we'll put the color out into the roughness. So now, right now, we see that nothing much has happened. And why that is, is because right now our plane is really, really large. So we actually have to increase the scale really really high so let's maybe change this scale to 1000 and now we can start seeing something but even that isn't large enough 
So I guess what we could do is shift T to add in these texture coordinates. And here in this scale, we can change these to be maybe 10 each. So if we hit shift, click and drag through all of them, we can select all of them and then just change one to maybe um, 10. And that should give us a lot more detail. And now that we made this 10, this does not have to be 1000 anymore. Maybe 200 will do. So yeah, that's one way of looking at the floor. And it looks fine. Let's increase the scale of the Voronoi texture as well. And what we'll do is right now, it's either completely black or completely white. We don't want that. Let's have, let's give all of it a little bit of texture. So we'll shift all of these to the side and then let's add a color ramp right here. Once we place that in, now we can truly crunch it in and get the control and shift this from black to a slightly lighter color and also take this white and change this down to a slightly deeper color. So that reduces the effect of the floor and there we have it. So this is uh, how I created that particular animation. Of course, the values here and there were a bit different, I guess. Not I guess, they definitely were. But this is the essential bit of what I created. So all that, that was left to do is come here, make sure you have the right output folder selected, then change this to FFmpeg video, change the encoding from Matroska to MPEG4 and output quality to perceptually lossless. Once you have this, you can actually render it out and you'd get that beautiful animation. What I wanted to do, which I will re-render right now, is I'm going to change the aspect ratio to a horizontal aspect ratio so that I have something, if at all I require it anywhere else. So in this horizontal aspect ratio, I think the camera will definitely have to change its focal length from four to maybe eight and everything else, the heights will have to be changed accordingly as well. So maybe keep this at four itself and just hit the render. I think this looks good enough for what I want. So yeah, the last thing that's left to do is render animation. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned something along the way. We'll keep making tutorials like this. If I ever create something, I will definitely create a tutorial as well. So thank you for watching and stay creative.